Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools to inspire you to create beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with six Dollar Tree budget, quick and easy, but high end looking spring and non seasonal farmhouse decor. So let's get crafting. Today's first DIY is going to be this double decker planter box using two wood crates from Dollar Tree, some Jenga or Tumbling Tower blocks four of these square beads, some ribbon and antique wax. So for the levels of this planter box, I am going to use eight Jenga blocks and I'm going to glue them together end to end like this in four pairs. These are going to be the legs of our planter box, like I said, to give us the two different levels. So we're gonna glue those with wood glue and let them dry completely. Now while those are drying, we'll come to our crates and using a baby wipe and our Waverly Antique Wax, I'm going to darken these up on the outside, on the bottom, and around the top edge. I'm not going to worry about doing the inside of the crates, but you could if you want. Once our legs are dry and firmly stuck together, I am going to paint those with my black chalk paint so that um, we can mostly so we can cover up the Jenga word that is imprinted on the side of each of the blocks. But also I'm going with the brown and black look for this project. So we're going to paint those on all of the sides as they're drying and then wait for them to be dried completely. Next, I'm also going to paint these four square beads. You could also use the unfinished wood cubes from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna paint these black to match and these are going to be the feet for our completed project. Now that the legs and the feet are dry, we're going to take one of our Jenga block legs at a time and you can see I'm going to fit them into the bottom crate, putting wood glue on the two sides that are touching the crate and on the bottom. We're gonna do this for all four corners, putting these Jenga block legs into our bottom crate. Once those legs are dry and firmly in place, I'm gonna put a little bit more wood glue on the top of each leg and then turn that upside down onto the bottom of what will be our top crate. And we're gonna now let this dry and then also glue our four wood beads that are the feet here on the top of our upside down stack, which will be the bottom. Once all of our pieces are dried, I'm gonna take this black and white gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue this around the center section of each of my crates just to add a little more texture and interest to our project. I'm just wood gluing or hot gluing on the corners to keep it nice and tight. And then once that is wrapped all the way around back to the back, I'm gonna make two small bows with this same ribbon that we will glue to the middle of the front. Now that our little planter is made, you can actually fill this with whatever you'd like. You can use it to hold uh, office supplies on your desk. I'm just putting some moss in it and a little bit of eucalyptus greenery. But again, you could use this and make these to store or display whatever you'd like.
If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, a big welcome to you. I'm so glad that you found me, and I really hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so, so much for your continued support of my channel. I hope everyone will take a second to tap that bell icon, check that your notifications are set to all, so that YouTube should let you know each time I upload a new video or go live here on my channel. For DIY number two, I'm gonna show you how you can take three books from Dollar Tree and change them out, personalize them for each season. So I'm using these three paperbacks, and here I'm just measuring how long of a piece of paper I would need to wrap all the way around it. It was close enough to 12 inches, so I'm just going to leave the length of my paper at 12 inches. Here I'm just going through some scrapbook paper that I had on hand, choosing three spring type uh, papers that I thought would go well together. And then we're going to cut these down to six and three quarter inches, which is the height of our books. So all three will be cut to six and three quarter inches or whatever the height of your book is, and then leave the length at 12 inches. Now my book has a one inch spine, so I'm gonna leave one inch in the middle. So I'm gonna score at five and a half inches and six and a half inches. That's gonna leave me that one inch in the center. So I'm folding on those score lines. I'm gonna tuck my book inside, and then I'm gonna measure how much extra I have on either end. It comes out to one and a quarter inches. So taking my book back out, I'm going to now score one and a quarter inches in from the end on each side. And this is where we're going to make our little flaps that are gonna fold around the front and back covers of our book. So you'll see here in a minute, I am not attaching anything to the book. So again, this will make it really nice and easy to be able to just change out your covers for each season and you can just have the one set of books that you use each time. So here's what it looks like with the cover wrapped around and then we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna score at the five and a half inches and six and a half inches to give us our spine and then I'm gonna score at one and a quarter, flip the paper around, score at one and a quarter again, and that will be all the folds I need to wrap my book. Now, of course, your measurements will be different based on which books you use. Now, once I have my books in the order I want them to be stacked, I'm gonna take my jute twine, run it under the bottom of my stack, and then I'm going to tie it in a knot here on the top in a double knot. It's gonna leave me one short piece of the jute twine, and then the longer piece that's still attached to my roll, I'm gonna wrap that three or four times around my book stack here, and then we'll trim it and tie it in a knot again. Now you can use stickers to put words on your book covers. I'm going to use these rolling pin words from my Magnolia website, and I'm going to just quickly stencil the words blessed, home, and family to the right side of my book stack. I love this font and how easy it is to add these words. Then to finish off my book stack, I'm just gonna stick a little piece of faux greenery under here, and then I'm going to make a jute bow by wrapping some jute twine around my fingers about four times, and then cutting a smaller piece that we will tie in the center of this loop to make it into a bow.
For DIY number three, we're going to be using some more Dollar Tree items to make this spring and very neutral, non-seasonal piece. We're gonna use a couple of pots, some greenery, these two wood plaques that are squares. We're gonna wood glue those together to make a rectangle. Of course, if you have one of the rectangle plaques, or shelves, you don't need to do this step. Now I'm gonna use these giant craft sticks from Walmart. I'm going to make the back of my little shelf here into like a picket fence. So I'm measuring out how many of these I'm going to need and I'm gonna end up using six. I'm gonna cut one of them to a point and then use that as a template to cut the other five so that my six fence posts look fairly much the same. Then on all six, I'm also going to cut straight across the bottom so it's not rounded and is more flat. So we're going to do this to all six, and then I'm going to use the baby wipe and the antique wax to stain all six of my fence pieces, front and back and the edges. Once my little shelf is also dry, I'm going to do the same method to stain that as well. Next for my stash, I have this little blessed word that is wood and has a little light in it. I just want the front part that says blessed. So I'm carefully trying to take this apart so that I can use that. I did cut a little bit off of the B. And then I'm just gonna paint the front and the edges of this with plaster. I am leaving that uh, line or strip at the bottom because you'll see that's how I'm going to glue it to my shelf. So I'm trying to get in all those little pieces and so this will look nice and finished. We're also going to use this same Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster on these two little pots. While those are drying, we'll come back to our fence now and just putting a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of each of our fence pieces. We're going to glue those to the back side of our shelf, getting them spaced as evenly as we possibly can. Next, I'm gonna use one more of the giant craft sticks to glue across the back as a brace, but I'm going to first use the antique wax on it. Then coming back to the pots, I'm gonna use this little natural ribbon from Dollar Tree just to glue it around the top edge of each of our pots. Then coming back to our fence, here's my cross piece. You can see I'm putting glue where the fence posts will be. And I'm going to lay my fence posts down to get that evenly across the back. Now coming back to our blessed, I'm going to take one tumbling tower block that I also stained antique wax so it'll blend in with the shelf. And I'm gonna glue this to the back at the bottom of the blessed so that it'll be easier to glue to our shelf. I'm also going to hot glue our two pots to the back on the left and the right of our shelf. And then we'll get our blessed word glued down as well. Next, I'm gonna add some more of that floral moss to each of my pots. And then I'm just choosing to put some greenery in here. You, of course, can put whatever color of florals you want to match your spring decor, or just greenery if you want to keep it very neutral. I 
I decided I needed something else on the back of the picket fence. So I have these two hearts that are different sizes. I'm giving them a coat of the plaster chalk paint as well. And then I'm going to glue these onto the back of the picket fence, kind of right in the middle of the project. Then we'll add a jute twine bow to the top of each heart as a finishing touch. Again, here's my finished project styled with some wood beads. Again, remember you can change this up with whatever colors and florals you'd like to modify it for your decor. For a complete list of all the supplies and tools I've used in today's projects, click the little down arrow to the right of the title of this video. That should open up the description box, or sometimes you have to hit the word more and it will open that up. There you will find a list for each project, as well as links to my Magnolia Design Co. website and my Amazon storefront. For DIY number four, we're gonna use some more items from Dollar Tree to make this really cute standing house sign. Two of these house-shaped signs, these decals, some tumbling tower blocks, and then some greenery. So I like these new farmhouse um, house-shaped signs. I could only find black at my store, but what I like to do sometimes with these Dollar Tree signs is go ahead and purchase two of them and then wood glue them together so that it makes it a more substantial and higher quality, thicker finished project. So I'm taking these two black house shapes and putting wood glue in the middle. I'm going to clamp them together, lining them up so that when they dry, we have a nicer, thicker sign. Next, I'm going to take some tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to see how many I need in a row to make a stand for this sign. Of course, if you want this to hang, you can skip this step. So I find that six tumbling tower blocks is about how long I need, and I'm going to make four lines of these. We're going to just find ones that match up really well together, and then make four lines of these six tumbling tower blocks. So I'm using my little level ruler there, and I'm going to glue them together with wood glue, again, making four of these strips. Now, while those are drying, we'll come back to our house, which is now dry, take the clamps off. And I actually wanted the white version of these houses, but my store didn't have them. So I'm gonna take some white chalk paint and brush this on, make it kind of still the shiplap look and not solidly painted white. Once that dries, I am gonna take my little sander and sand it just a little bit so that a little bit more of the black shows through. Again, whatever color you want this sign to be and whatever amount of distressing. Once I have it how I liked it, I am going to seal that paint with some matte finish Mod Podge. Now coming back to our strips, I'm gonna sand any glue that happens to have seeped through. And I'm now going to glue these together in two sets of two. So running some glue along the long edge, we're gonna squish two of these together and do that twice. Then once those are dry, I am choosing to paint my two stand pieces black to help them blend in with the finished project. Now you might choose to not put a word on this project, but I found these new decals. At least it was the first time I'd seen them at Dollar Tree, so I decided to try to use them. They, I thought they were individual letters, but they are all connected together, so kind of take them off carefully. 
and then you're gonna lay them down on the center of your project. Of course, if you have some of my Magnolia stencils, you can choose to stencil a word on here as well, but I wanted to give you a variety of options. So once I had that straight on there, you could Mod Podge again, but I didn't feel the need to. I was going to use this wreath from Target, but it was a little too big, so I took the greenery off and I'm rebending the wire circle to make it a little bit smaller to better fit the size of this project. Then just clip off the edges of the wire. And then I'm going to hot glue one piece of greenery at a time around this circle to make this smaller wreath. In order to cover up the holes from the hangers, I am taking another one of these natural looking uh, ribbons from Dollar Tree and I'm just running those on the two peaks of the roof and then I'm also going to go around the little chimney. Now that our wreath pieces are dry, I'm gonna take a piece of the black and white gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree and loop it around the wreath. We're gonna glue this a little bit here at the top of the house, and then we'll trim our ribbon and secure it to the back as well. Now we're gonna take the two stand pieces we made and we're going to sandwich our house between these two base pieces so that it's able to stand. So running a bead of hot glue along the bottom front of our sign, I'm gonna center it on that one piece of the stand and squish it in there so it's secure. Then put glue on the other stand piece and put it on the back side to basically, like I said, sandwich the house in between so that it is able to stand. If you enjoy budget home decor videos like this, I hope you'll consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know people are enjoying my content and then they will show it to more and more viewers. DIY number five is super cute and simple. We're just gonna use one of these bunny plaques, one of these shiplap easel signs from Dollar Tree, some moss and a couple different ribbons. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Waverly's Pink Cloud to get this nice peach color for my bunny. But of course, again, you can use whatever color paint that you'd like. Then once that was dry, I did take some white and I'm gonna distress it a little bit by going around the edges and then a little bit in the middle with my white. If you end up getting more white than you want, you can just sand away some of the extra to blend it out. Next, taking these two different ribbons, the black and white gingham and then the dark green lace, I'm just gonna tie two simple bows that we're gonna glue up to one of the ears of our little girl bunny. So now we're just gonna glue our bunny plaque to our little shiplap easel. Of course, if you wanted to change the color of the easel, you could paint that as well. Then taking some hot glue under the base of the easel and above the, or under the bunny, we're going to just put some of this spring moss down here to fill in that space.
Then our last step is just to glue our two bows that we made for our bunny on one of the ears. And again, this project is completely customizable to your colors of spring decor. If you're on Facebook, I hope you'll head over to my Monarch Mom DIY Facebook page, like it and follow it. I go live there multiple times during the week doing different projects than what I'm showing here on YouTube. Our final project for this video is another simple one. We're going to make a cutting board flower pouch using any cutting board. It could be one of the signs from Dollar Tree, some florals, and a placemat from Dollar Tree. So the first thing I'm doing, this is a cutting board that I believe was from Target's Bullseye's Playground. I am just choosing to paint it again with that plaster Waverly chalk paint. Then this is a fairly neutral plastic placemat that I found at Dollar Tree. I'm just going to cut a piece of it to be the depth that I want for the little pouch on the front of this cutting board. So lining it up at the bottom, I'm going to wrap it around and then we're going to glue it on. So putting some glue at the bottom, you can see I'm gonna line it up and I did angle the sides that are gonna wrap around to the back. Once I have the bottom secure, I'm gonna wrap it around, leave a little bit of a space so that we can put some florals in it and then we'll glue the two different sides to the back of our cutting board. I decided I wanted to add something to the front of the pouch, so I'm using this blessed word, which I believe was from Hobby Lobby, but you could use any of the wood or metal words as well from Dollar Tree. So once I have that centered and secure in place, the last step is simply just to add in your florals. Again, I'm not gluing these in, so these could be changed out whenever you want for the seasons. I just thought about this, but you could also either cut off that dark blue um, strip on the placemat or cover it up with a ribbon if it doesn't go with your color scheme. And for a finishing touch, I'm gonna take this wired burlap ribbon and just make a simple bow that we will glue to the top of the cutting board handle. Thanks so much for joining me today. As always, I'd love to know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.